Okay, just uh, this is gonna be a quick garden update and a shout out to my newly found sister. Uh, I had made a video like oh, shortly after we had first spoke. That's some months ago, a few months ago, and I was showing quilts and that I'm working on patchwork quilts. And I would like to have you tell me which one uh, suits your fancy so that I can make it and send it to you. A token of sisterly love. Um, I want to touch base a little bit on, um, before we do this garden update, um, when I, I guess, gave my happy Father's Day out there to fathers of darkness and light. Um, people might be like, oh, darkness, father of darkness. What you have to understand, folks, is we have been so conditioned and programmed um, to be in the state of duality instead of polarity. And this is a world, this design work was uh, polarity, not duality. There is nothing evil about the darkness. Now, what certain people do in the darkness um yeah that's evil so it was just kind of like a like a, a prod or a, um like something to ponder because darkness is not evil and our existence is procured essentially by polarity like our magnetic poles I mean you have to have dark to have light you have to have light to have dark I mean it just in this material existence you have to have the polarities and there's nothing evil about darkness it's these uh, hidden hands that have twisted um, and perverted everything um, to make you think that um, the polarity, um, one of the polarities is evil. And these particular hidden hands hate women. So, you know, of course they wrote us in an evil light, you know, we're the ones that, that caused all of this chaos and, and whatnot, um, which is absolute ridiculousness. We all know who, who started all this. It, it, it's the haters of the feminine aspect, period. But, you know, they hate... <laughs> They hate the feminine aspect so much, but yet they try to emulate it. It's, they're wackadoos, okay? Absolute wackadoos. <laughs> so anyway, I just didn't want uh, some people that don't know me very well to think I'm like into worshiping uh, evil, because that's far from who I am. I am actually, the, Pop, the opposite polar app, you know, I, I, there's not an evil bone in my body, I, I, now don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect, and yes, I have, have thoughts of, you know, smashing things once in a while, <laughs> um, out of frustration, I am a work in progress nothing's perfect and I strive to be a loving and kind caring person and so I just wanted to set that record straight okay so washing my hands of that now <laughs> and we're gonna get on get on upstairs so I can show you the quilts that I'm working on 
and I want you to tell me which one suits you fancy. Um, one is more of a, a winter quilt and one's uh, more for the warmer, cooler, I mean, yeah, warmer days. See, I, I cut that plant all back, guys. I have, uh, I have it all around the house um, in vases, rooting, uh, and then I put the pots outside. That the that big remember how it was just covering the window. Okay, yeah, I am seriously doing some serious harvesting of my herbs. Um, these were from all from the buckets. I got sage, parsley, peppermint, spearmint, cilantro, lemon balm, and dill, and I still got a ton more. Back to what I was wanting to get at, though. Okay. Um, this one here is a, the, the more summery one. It's going to have a sheet backing, so it's going to be much lighter and cooler for uh, summer days. And then the denim one, it's made out of old uh, jeans and shorts. And I actually hand sewed uh, these little squares on these darker denims. Uh, and once it starts getting um, washed and see how it's going to fray like an old pair of cutoffs and you know denim is so heavy um, it's a very I've made several of these um, it's a very heavy blanket and you can either select like a, a fleece so it's real soft on the back or um, uh, sheet backing but it's very they're very 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 warm I made my son one for graduation back way back and it's um, it turned out really good I used a, a baby blue fleecing for that so yeah this is what I was started doing yesterday and I'm still doing today I have collected so much chamomile and calendula uh, I'll pick the chamomile flowers and I'll go out there the next day and there's just as many if not more. I had started uh, some rose oil which I need to strain today and that I'm going to use for uh, beauty products such as lotions and creams. It smells absolutely divine. Absolutely divine. And so out to the garden. Um, I haven't done a whole lot of transformation. Uh, we've had a lot of rain. Uh, things are growing though really well. I need to get all this stuff in the ground. I still haven't had a chance to do that. I have decided though, I am going to put my, I put the mammoths back front, about out back which I'm not sure if I showed you that or not, the mammoth pumpkins. And I still have the um, pie pumpkins. And what I'm going to do with them is um, I decided where I'm going to put the, the pumpkins, the pie pumpkins. See that like little strip, like runner strip right there? I'm going to put the fabric down, the yard fabric down, and... Um, plant the pie pumpkins out here and I have more morning glories so I'm going to plant around that to grow up that the ones I planted around this sign over here um, they haven't really jumped up and taken off a whole lot um, we've had a lot a lot of rain guys and um, it hasn't really been a balanced season so but I've been picking uh, chamomile flowers every day out here, picking these little guys. And so I definitely am not going to be running out of chamomile this winter. And of course, all these other wildflowers are edible and have municipal purposes, which I have been picking. And my calendula, I have been harvesting as they come. Like I, I need to harvest all of these today. Must, 
and I'd been drying them out for soaps and teas and gosh I I know someone who even makes uh, like flat cat like like flat jacks with them I have not I've yet to use the recipe but it sounds interesting my corn flowers are getting ready to bloom and the corn I know is bigger from last week um, that was a really windy 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 day and so it's just blowing all over the place but it has probably doubled in size from last week I'm pretty sure and yesterday I all these little bald spots that beets didn't start coming up I went ahead yesterday and and filled in the bald spots with um, some more beet seeds so they'll be coming in at different times and the cucumbers are slowly but surely I I need to harvest a lot of stuff in there like that oregano and that Russian purple kale all the stuff that's in the, there on the dining room table um, is from my pots um, I have a lot of herbs and stuff out here I need to pick and harvest and I've been doing the same thing with the lavender. Uh, I have been picking it as it comes in and, and drying it. Some things I've just been letting dry natural and other things I've been putting in the dehydrator. Uh, the grape plant that I planted last year is just taking off. I mean, it's doing very well. Uh, it takes a few years for these things to get established. I mean, it'll be a few years before I'm literally getting, you know, some grapes in. But, uh, yeah, we have all kinds of rogue potato plants up front. Uh, potatoes I missed from last year. We have another one popping up right there. Right there. So, there's actually four potato plants out here, but... We love potatoes, so it really isn't a problem. <laughs> this all needs to get in the ground, though. I, it, it's like right now, it's, it was raining this morning. It looks like it's going to start raining again. I mean, it's been a really wacky uh, season. So I, I do what I can when I can. These are in bloom. And they're just so beautiful. I love these flowers. And I actually start. I took some starts off of them last um, season. And I planted them over there. But see, I still have a lot in these pots to pick. You can tell which ones I, uh, yeah, <coughs> cut back. <coughs> which ones I haven't. <coughs> that pineapple basil's a bush, man. I need to get that going for sure. And so, oh, those dumpster dive rose bushes, they're pink. Pink roses, at least on the one that had the two buds. And I'll tell you what, it looks like it's going to start raining, guys. <sighs> How am I ever going to get this done if it's always raining? The zucchini is looking good, though. It's looking good. And those flowers I planted last year um, are getting big. Look at those. Those sure are pretty, aren't they? You know, the name's eluding me of what they're called, but maybe next time I will write it down and so I can tell you. <laughs> and... Uh, the rose bushes that I planted this year um, are doing good. They're doing good. And I need to cut back all the dying dead daisies so that, and dead had all these so that they'll produce some more flowers this season. Um, if you dead had them, um, they'll start growing new sprouts. And those sunflowers are really popping. I got the mammoths out. By that telephone pole again this year um, I wasn't sure how well they would do because I planted them um, around stuff that was already established and I was kind of fearful that they wouldn't do well but they're they're 
they're coming up so last time uh, that like square dirt area um looked like there wasn't much there and things are starting to actually um pop up where you can actually see the growth um so we got the napa cabbage and the brussels sprouts and the broccoli and i got some dinosaur kale and i got still leeks and uh, Thai peppers and other things that I need to get in the ground not just the stuff up front but definitely been some growth since last week once things get going I mean my bean pole runners are actually starting to run down the fence line And it looks good, and the potatoes back here are looking good. Yeah, and like I said, I, I'm not sure if I told you I put the, from last video, I put the mammoth pumpkins up here. And I'm in a, I'm still up in the air on whether to ha have them come this way or go that way. Um. I thought I wanted to go that way, but I don't know. We'll just have to wait and see how this goes. But the uh, the birdhouse gourds are finally starting to go up the trellis. Yeah, I still have a lot of transformation to do, but um, I can only do what I can do when it's not raining. I still haven't moved the hostas over there and put more echinacea seed down. It's a process, guys. It's a process. <laughs> and I have decided by by next season, next growing season, I am going to convert this into a hen house. I've been batting it back and forth, and you can have three hens in the city limits. And so I'm going to turn half a, tur inside the kennel. I'm going to make the hen house. It'll be, you know, about to there, from there to there. And then um, I'm going to devise and make like a, a gate right here so that, that they can't go that way. And then I can open up this gate for them and open up this gate for them during the day. And I'll run some chicken wire all over, basically where that like fencing is all the way around and so that they can traverse in here and they'll they won't go over where the dogs are but they'll traverse in here and then i'll open up the gate for them to go back there too so that's a big open space um yeah so three of them so i was thinking you know Yes, they're hens, but I was going to call them Tom, Dick, and Harry, or Larry, Curly, and Mo, something, <laughs> something silly like that. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, it's Tom, Dick, and Harry. Yeah, they won't get a complex. <laughs> Okay, guys. Short and sweet. Yeah, I had to cut my fig tree um, right here. Because um, when I brought it out, they sprayed. Um, and the aluminum sat on it. And it literally burnt holes all through it. And it looked so bad. But it all worked out because it actually split. And I got new growth. Yeah, these people are crazy. Crazy, crazy. And these, this is from that plant up there. And this, this is the part that didn't really have any leaves on it. But uh, I'm rooting it, and um, it'll get leaves back on it. Guess what this is? My son brought it over. I'll give you a clue. You make tequila with it. A guave, I think is what they call the guave, a guave, guave, yeah. 
pretty cool. Yup, yup. So, guys, hopefully, my next week garden update. My next week garden update. Um, I'll have all that the trace stuff in the ground and a little bit more transformation going on. I don't know if I'll even actually get to it today because it looks like it's getting ready to start pouring again. But I have worked in the rain before. I, I really got to get that stuff in the ground. Alrighty, folks. You all have a good day, okay? <laughs> you all have a good day now. Boo, you want to take us out? You want to take us out, boo? Say bye, boo. Say bye, guys. Boo, say bye. I actually trimmed him myself. I think I did a pretty good job. His hair was so long, you couldn't see his legs or his feet. I need to get some actual dog shears. I did it with scissors. And I think I did a really, really good job. Because I'm not a dog groomer. It turned out really good, I thought, for scissors and my first time. And it saves me some money. Plus, I just don't see him sitting for some groomer. I mean, I just don't. He has a serious... I'll, I'll walk out of the room and, and he'll start freaking out. Separation anxiety. Serious. This dog is crazy. <laughs> Does not like to be ar not around me. That's weird. I like it on one hand, but on another hand, it's like, oh, God, what would he do if I actually had to go somewhere for a while? 